Hi guys and welcome back. Um, today we're gonna go back some time, a couple, a few years from today. Um, through uh, certain areas in Texas, uh, they were actually um coming through pretty heavy, and this would be the actual the Gulf Cartel, and uh, they would actually um dominate the actual, you know, the importation of 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 all the culture band that you know that was actually out there, but. Along this way, uh, a, a group, and they'll call it a group, a group uh, was actually uh, pulling off a scheme that actually was pretty smart, was pretty smart. They were actually taking loads from the actual cartel and reselling it. And a couple of groups were doing this. Uh, one was on the law enforcement in the U.S., and the other one was actually from everywhere, you know. And there was it was a it was a unique group in itself, you know. But before we get that, before we get to that, um, so when the Gulf Cartel actually was actually dominating this actual um, port or this actual area port of entry, um, the federal government needed to do something about it. They needed to step in. And they need to know exactly how far their tentacles went into the actual U.S., meaning how many corrupt law enforcement were actually facilitating this type of actual operation. And we're not just talking about Border Patrol, Customs Border Protection, Immigration. No, we're talking about the entire sheriffs, uh, local PD. Uh, you name it. Um, they were they were they were pretty much up there, you know. And uh, even certain groups, you know, like the Panama Unit, you know, they were straight out just robbing, uh, just robbing loads. You know, they would see something, they would just rob that load, would put nothing on paper, and on the side, sell it. You know, sell it to. They knew who to sell it to. You know, I mean, a little side business, and and that's what the actual federal government wanted to actually. Uh, put an actual a, a, a real numbers of how far they've actually penetrated law enforcement, you know, because something was actually obviously going on, and it was it was in a unique way. It was actually a unique way. They started creating all these teams, these special uh, teams to combat uh, street level dope dealing, street level, uh, you know. Um, money laundering and so forth right so uh, a few actual um law enforcement they fell to these traps because don't forget um these are not federal these are state or these are city or these are county actual sh uh, law enforcement so um traditionally around border towns you're going to be a local person actually as a deputy as a sheriff as a as a regular police officer, you're going to be locally because that's your hometown. You grew up there and you applied and you, you know, you know the community. So it wouldn't be that hard to actually corrupt a, a small city, a small town. So that's how primarily they were actually running these actual operations. So uh, one example is how they were doing it was would be, okay, so there would be an actual a uh, drug trafficker, drug seller, whatever you want to call it, and he is part of a of this group that I that that's what they used to call them. They, they, this group, right? He would actually contact law enforcement, make contact with them, and offer them money for police reports. Okay, so these actual individuals were actually cartel members. But working on the U.S. side, actually robbing their actual cartel leaders from down south. So they would actually, for example, just to say 10 pounds of whatever substance, 10 pounds of whatever substance um, needs to be reported back to the actual, the main guys down south in the cartel that this load was actually seized. It was a bust. Todo se cayó. Everything fell apart. That's what they needed on paper. 
So they need a paper trail. They need a paperwork from law enforcement. And so they would actually ask uh, them to produce fake seizure reports. And so for these, say for example, for 10 pounds of whatever, he would pay the actual law enforcement $10,000, okay? And these are just fictitious numbers, okay? 10,000 numbers, $10,000 for a fake report on some 10 kilos, which is 20 pounds of actual Coke, pure Coke, right? So now he would actually take a couple of actual kilos to a certain spot. He'll call it into his contact and law enforcement as a tip. And law enforcement would get a warrant. They would search that actual vehicle or the property or the rental uh, storage, whatever plan they, they, they come up with, right? So now that law enforcement, that crooked law enforcement, that, that ones that are taking the bribe, he'll show up. He will make a fictitious actual report but it would actually be a real report because he did. they would leave a couple of kilos behind, right? So once they leave these two kilos behind, they would actually add so much cut and delete it so much that they would hardly give anything up. You know, they, out, of two, out of two kilos, they'll make 10 kilos and they'll just, they don't, it doesn't really matter who's going to get it because the Cops are gonna just confiscate it, put it into actual um, into the actual um, evidence room, and then burn it. You know, and let me give you guys a little insight. Okay, now the reason they they also started catching on because the fact that they don't mention this in any of the reports, but they can give you guys a little bit of insight. Say, for example, you bust the load for ten pounds of green. Okay, you got ten pounds of green, and there's 20 packages okay out of them 20 packages 10 of them actually have to be sampled you'll cut a piece of that actual uh, package or brick you'll cut off 10 small samples bag them and ship them to the dea so they can actually log it They'll, so that actual the 10 samples of that load will actually get sent to the actual um DEA, right? So now the DEA starts noticing, hey, why are we getting such bad cut or such diluted uh, products all of a sudden from this area, from this actual, from this town? They didn't think about that. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't put that into perspective that uh, you, it has to be shipped out. So they were getting all these diluted actual drug seizures and that's what actually created a red flag too. So they needed to actually infiltrate in the and then so so they set this up and I'm gonna tell you guys a little insight too. This is actually on the paper report, but there's no way that this actually happened. So I'm gonna just make up some fictitious numbers, but just we're going to buy just the percentage of what actually he was getting, right? So he did a report for the 10 kilos of coke that was actually seized from this drug bus. So now he turns over the police paperwork to this individual that actually sends it to his bosses in Mexico in the cartel saying that this load was a bust. Okay? That's okay. So that's it. They write it off as a loss. Okay? And in reality he still had them 10 kilos and he would sell it to his people that he would actually have con having contact with. That's what his business is anyway. So that's how they were actually stealing and kicking back the actual law enforcement. And it's actually pretty smart. Actually pretty smart, you know, considering the risk that you're going to take. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it right, right? So, but the only thing I, I, I didn't really, you can't believe it because I'll tell you guys right now. Okay, so. So now there's actual uh, a, a, an individual, an associate, and then the contact with actual law enforcement. So now this undercover actual agent, undercover police officer, actually is, is pretending to be a, a coke, coke dealer. So he hits up that actual associate. Hey, I need this. I need this police report. Blah blah blah. Tells him the whole scheme, and he's like, okay, boom. 
I know who to go to. So now he takes him to this law enforcement. Law enforcement agrees to it. And it's okay, so, they, so listen to this carefully, okay? So say, for example, they were, uh, the law enforcement and that, that associate, that middle guy, were going to charge this actual cartel member a thousand, uh, $10,000 for this police report, okay? So now this police report is worth $10,000, okay? So the middleman delivers the actual report, picks up the ten grand. And then meets this actual crooked law enforcement and gives them fifteen hundred dollars because that's his percentage. That's what they agreed to. That's his cut out of ten grand. Yeah, nice try. Don't forget if you get caught accepting bribes, you have to report that to the IRS. It, ha it is taxable and you will pay taxes on it. So therefore, you always want to go in as a low bidder if you're going to do accept bribes. Because eventually, you get, when you get caught, and that's when you do get caught, you have to pay your percentage of taxes, depending on what kind of bracket you're in, to the actual IRS off, them, off that bribe money. And that's true. So I kid you not. So that's why they... Specifically said, hey, this actual guy only took 1500 out of 10000 And he's doing, he's actually producing the whole actual bills, you know, he's producing all that. So that's what you have to actually think about, too. I mean, come on, you know. So, you know, whatever. So, so then that's how they were actually conducting these businesses, you know. And there was other special teams up there, these special units that were... You know, to fight this, you know, all this poison going into the communities. And that's how they were actually pulling this hustle off. And uh, and they really wanted to go after this actual car, the, the, the government wanted to go after the Gulf cartel and dismantle them. They put a pretty big hit on them, you know, they put a pretty, pretty big hit on them. And like Shadow's always said, you know, you're not going to ever win with the government because they could just keep throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing people and groups at you that can actually break you down, you know. And uh, that's just a little take a back in the day uh, story on actually uh, how they were actually conducting business out there. And and I'm, and out of this whole situation, I'm gonna have some more coming out, and including you know like uh, these these uh Mexican citizens Mexican citizens doing federal time. Uh, getting phones flown in with 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 drones, you know, and and we're gonna get into all that and uh, and in the future, I got a couple of videos coming on that about that one too. I'm just doing a little research, but um, well, that's it. I hope you guys like and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.